Yoko Fuji, who is with Strategy and Innovations Program for Kamehameha School. Now let's back up, if we could, to World War I. World War I, England and France were the premier powers. Russia was very, very powerful. Then came World War I. Other countries were destroyed. America emerged much stronger. And the Europeans and the Russians hadn't learned their lessons yet. So 20 years later, they started another war and included Japan. Those nations were left in rubble. America emerged as number one in the nation and continued prevailing through the 40s, 50s, 60s. And then stuff started to happen. And those of us who have been on the planet long enough to remember the 1980s, remember that Japan rose from the ashes and was threatening us as the world's number one economy. They managed to burst their bubble. But so we were number one again, but just for a while, because here came China and here comes China. And suddenly our <clears throat> complacency has been severely shaken, including in the educational field. Enter Dora Nakafuji, Strategy and Innovation for Kamehameha School. I know that educators nationwide are struggling, struggling, saying, how can America be the premier nation if we're not doing an excellent job of educating our kids and bringing them thoroughly and completely into the 21st century. So Kamehameha School is trying a new type of program. So welcome, Dora, to the program. Thank you. Thanks for and having me. <coughs> so you want to give us a little bit of background, and then, then we can bring up the, the first uh, slide. <laughs> oh, sure. I, I, I guess a lot of the motivation behind that story, I was actually lost in your your story of history here, uh, kind of uh, reminiscent of history class. But um, I, I think that the, the bottom line is that we, every generation, mm -hmm. we have new technology that evolves and materials that come up. And our current times, we have some amazing technologies yes, now. And even though in the past we've had great observations, great lessons learned, um, and ways of doing things, mm -hmm. the new technology and the new materials afford us some new efficiencies well, and ways of doing things. Well, now let me interrupt <laughs> and let you expound on Moore's Law. <laughs> Moore's Law. It's doubling everything and tripling everything. Yeah. Well, now it's actually exponentially increasing Exponentially. Everything. It was Professor Moore, who then became founder of Intel, who in the early days of computers said, Every 18 months, the capacity of computers is going to double, while the cost slices in half. Yeah. And by George, he was pretty well on target. He, he's still around, and he's astounded at how accurate he was. So just as you said, change because of that is happening exponentially, and maybe too fast for you and me, but certainly <laughs> we've got to have the kids keep up, yeah? Yeah, yeah. And, and I think that's, that's really the challenge, is mm -hmm. how do we bring these types of skill sets into our learning environments not only allow the kids to experience it but also operationally how do mm -hmm. we gain efficiencies and how do we develop our next practices rather mm -hmm. than just mm -hmm. best practices because so, best practices are based on learnings of yeah. and going forward so let me predict as we go forward we're going to combine real world three-dimensional stuff <laughs> with learning very rapidly it's really hands-on yeah. right yeah. And, and, and if yeah. you put these tools into practice mm -hmm. it becomes second nature mm -hmm. it's it's that going to that old adage of flying by the seat of your pants which mm -hmm. has mm -hmm. a sense of adventure but mm -hmm. it's also what kids gravitate to because there's a sense of yeah. exploration and creativity. kids do not like to sit in classrooms <laughs> and stare at a teacher who's talking they want a sense of adventure. And if we can give them three-dimensional stuff to play with, I, I think that really enhances the learning experience. Maybe we can bring the, the first slide up to kind of illustrate what we're doing here. 
So what, what is a Power Scope project? So really this project is, is and I, I entitled it Invis Making the Invisible Visible, mm -hmm. partly is because when we talk about energy, um, it, it's very hard to visualize electric use and other things, mm -hmm. but when you turn on the light, you're actually mm -hmm. using a lot of energy. Yeah. And many times we don't even really appreciate how much energy we use mm -hmm. throughout the day. And as we introduce renewables and other types of uh, generation onto our islands as part of our 100% renewable um, goals, we actually need to start asking that question of how are we using it mm -hmm. um, and how are we more sustainably integrating that into our environments. Mm -hmm. and, and let me, that word sustainable in the worlds that you and I inhabit, we use all the time, but I would define sustainable as sort of self-feeding. You're not going to just throw a, a bunch of dollars at something and it's nice and then it poofs. It's going to build, it's going to serve as a platform for more and more and more and more building. Is that a decent definition of sustainable? Yeah, I yeah. think that's, that's definitely a, a good definition because it shows that there's learning on knowledge. I mean, mm -hmm. things that you've experienced and you kind of build on that knowledge. Because mm -hmm. I think at the end of the day, being sustainable is about um, including certain practices into whatever you do mm -hmm. as part of the process, processing, mm -hmm. part of what you do as part of habit. Mm -hmm. And um, so our, our project really is just a small sliver of the entire portfolio of all the things that are happening um, and this was really designed to address kind of our understanding of our various campuses and our places and how much energy we were using and how to more effectively manage mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. the energy use because we want to be conscientious we also want to be good good citizens mm -hmm. and in doing that we need to actually understand some of these things that relate to energy, whether it be water and other, uh, other um, underlying infrastructures mm -hmm. for operation, but energy being a key component, how are we using it? And where can we get economies of scales or efficiencies? These technologies mm -hmm. allow us to be um, more insightful mm -hmm. and build on that kind of seat of the pants feel of, mm -hmm. hey, I think mm -hmm. we're using a little bit too much. Well, why? Because these things are happening or we get a signal, mm -hmm. a visual signal now Whereas in the past, we weren't quite sure, except for the bill. <laughs> but now we have a visual signal of what we're doing and using, you know, maybe minute by minute or, you know, at least some hours. Or, or, or so you can, can graph tackle. it off in real time. And, Those and are the tools, uh, you yes. use the word visible. Somehow you had the phrase making the invisible visible. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, you, it was, again, dealing with the kids, you're getting them to see stuff and you know they were born with a mini computer in their hands so they, they understand this stuff intimately and instinctively yeah, yeah. It, the, the platform itself lends itself well too because it it has a visual display that mm -hmm. immediately not only informs the operation side but there's also an immediate platform that kids can learn to read Right. Mm -hmm, it's not mm -hmm. so difficult because it's, it's a gra graph. It's a simple color graph. Mm -hmm. And those are all <laughs> tools and elements of STEM education that we mm -hmm. want to try to be able to connect. And then it's dual value, dual purpose. Right. Yep, so you're yep. not creating a whole set of, you know, it, these tools are practical. In other mm -hmm. words, it, 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 it's relevant to the place that they are at. And then mm -hmm. they can learn about the place and apply their learning to help the place. Mm -hmm. It's all connected. Yeah, maybe that uh, brings up the next slide. <laughs> <coughs> so, so this is a, kind of how you, the, the sequence that you lead, lead the children through? Well, this kind of sequence question really came about early on where, you know, we, we were looking at, it's, it's an awareness. It's, it's all about awareness. So if you have an interest in an awareness, you, you start asking questions and given the set of information you have can lead you to one set of solutions. But that inquiry leads to some action. And mm -hmm, that's really mm -hmm. kind of our ability to get more insightful. So the first level is, yeah, you got your monthly bills, mm -hmm. but then the natural question is what's going on? Why is it so high? So we may end up attaching our actions to doing some things which mm -hmm. could impact our bills, but 
do we really understand how it impacts? So Precisely. these tools now give us more of the sub-hourly real-time information that gives us kind of a heartbeat of our campus. Very and that good. heartbeat beat tells us whether we're using a lot, racing that heart, mm -hmm. or if we're like resting right now. And so those kinds of signals allow us to make other informed decisions and drive other actions. So can, can you walk us through the, the graph with the, all the, the green mountains and valleys in there? <laughs> So that's just an illustration of um, our ability now to see how we're using our energy um, in this kind of a, a, a profile. Is it called uh, an energy is this, profile? Is this all of the Kamehameha campus? Or? Yeah, so yeah. all three campuses now have mm -hmm. the same visual ability to, to monitor in real time. Um, we worked with Hawaiian Electric and STEM, which is the provider of that tool set, to integrate this as part of, um, Hawaii Electric launched it as part of their Smart Power for Schools, and we're one of the mm -hmm. first, um, well, we're, I think we're the first yeah. private school to actually adopt this and utilize it in our places. So um, operationally, we can now identify where our peaks mm -hmm. are, our low times and our high times are, how we're using energy, where our bulk of the use is, which is in the green, so, and then solar, which is in the yellow. Is this a 24-hour uh, period, or this does is, it start at I midnight and end at two, midnight? Or? Yeah, this is two days worth of days, data, okay. and then you can kind of tell on the bottom where we do have solar. You can see mm -hmm. one day it's sunny, the other day, um, uh, actually the first uh, day was not as sunny, the second day yeah, it was sunny. Yeah, yeah. So you can see how the solar impacts our usage. Mm -hmm. So we do have um, solar self-generation on our roofs, and one of the questions is how much more should we get or how can we better effectively utilize solar? And, and there are challenges with integrating solar, partly because of the variability, as you can see here. Absolutely, some days yeah. you got it and some days you don't, but there are also now emerging tools where um, we could be, you know, looking at our own usage on campus, mm -hmm. what equipment mm -hmm. do we have on, and maybe begin to manage that demand as well. So there's a combination mm -hmm. of solutions yeah. that we can now take having this information. So like that little yellow blip under there, that means that there is more solar energy provided than the campus is able to absorb? Well, because there's still green, that means that yeah. our campus yeah. energy use is still positive, meaning mm -hmm. we're still using energy. Yeah. We haven't sent it mm -hmm. back. but. The yellow shows how productive our solar panels mm -hmm, are during mm -hmm. that time and during that day, which then helps understand where, you see the dotted line right above the green? Yeah, yeah. That shows what we would have used if mm -hmm, we didn't have solar. Mm -hmm, so that yeah. gives us an indication of how effective our solar program is, mm -hmm. which is a great metric to have yeah, yeah. in terms of you know, decision making and driving future investments. Mm -hmm, Question is, mm -hmm. Are there other technologies out there that we need to, to better manage our load? Because mm -hmm. our load isn't only in the middle of the day, you know. I, so I we have that, yeah. different peaks and different usage profiles. Mm -hmm. And this really helps us kind of do that analysis and have that conversation, right? Have that conversation with our um, <clears throat> our facilities where this is at, and they're at our campuses. Mm -hmm. They're also at our office buildings, and, and we're going to be trying one of our commercial properties. So mm -hmm. they all have different mm -hmm. shapes. Yeah, the commercial property would be way, way different from this. We shall see. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's my uneducated guess. Uh, and are the students looking at these graphs too and getting uh, an explanation of what's going on? So this is just starting. So mm -hmm. as part of the effort, uh -huh. we, um, again, the target was really to help our campus facilities, mm -hmm. operations mm -hmm. folks um, begin to better um, identify strategies that could help. Because yeah, they're yeah, so yeah. busy with everything oh, that's yeah, going yeah, on, yeah. just keeping the campus running. And so we wanted to make it quick and simple. But at the same time, the mm -hmm. way that the program was rolled out, and there's a partnership mm -hmm. with Department of Education under the Smart Power for Schools, yep. um, there was a natural link to uh, actual so. connect yep. with students. So the tools and the, pl the viewers are dual purpose. We don't have to change it because it's simple yeah, enough for the yeah. kids to, yep. to learn and use. And on that very cheery note, we need to take a break. Code Green, Howard Wig, Doranaka Fuji, back in one minute. I'm Jay Fidel of ThinkTech. Our flagship energy show, among the six energy shows we have, is Hawaii, the state of clean energy. It plays every Wednesday at 4 p.m. Come around and see us. 
Learn about energy. Keep current on energy on thinktechhawaii.com. Aloha and welcome to At the Crossroads. I'm your host, Keisha King. You can catch me every Wednesday, alive at 5. I'll see you there. Welcome back to Code Green with Dora Nakafuji. Strategy and innovation. I can't call you chief, but uh, no. one, one of the, the strategists and innovators with Kamehameha School, they are launching, it's still in the preliminary stages, a solar or clean energy program, which they aim, I think, to eventually really, really integrate into the kids' curriculum. And of course, for the little kids, it'll be simple when you get up to high school. It's going to be a lot more sophisticated. So why, why don't we bring up the, the next slide and see where in the world this uh, innovative program is going for, for Kamehameha School. So what's all this about now? So this, this graphic shows a little bit of some of the visuals that come from this tool now that we have it. Um, Prior to that, we, we definitely did have our energy bill as every organization mm -hmm. has and, and residential customer has. But as a cus commercial customer, we also need to understand how much we're energy, you know, how much energy we're using and with the solar, how effective it is. So it's that same green, hilly mm -hmm. profile mm -hmm. that you have. And that gives us some metrics like demand and um, how our energy use consumption is. Um, the other one is really kind of a, a color one. The, you can see the red, yellow, and green, and um, different ways of rendering it. It's kind of a, a, an area chart of hotspots, I call it, where the red indicates high uses, and mm -hmm. it's an average across multiple um, weeks of oh, this how you're weeks. trending. Uh, yeah. How long would this time frame be with that multicolored? The color. Thing? Well, so. There, um, the STEM tool actually provides you the ability to look across an average of seven weeks, which mm. gives you a nice historical profile of how yeah. you use energy. And there's, this is nice to begin troubleshooting, you know, in this view is, is every day of the week, but you can actually will it down to each day of the week mm -hmm. um, across seven weeks. And that gives you a, a sense of trends. And um, it's just a very flexible tool, which I, I think can give not only operations folks, but you know, kids as, as, who are curious mm -hmm. about how energy is used. And you can, they can easily find a, a, a weekend or they can find yeah, when yeah. they're on holiday. Like, because you like can the, see. the slide, the blue and the green on the left, would that be a weekend or a holiday period? Or? Well, no, this is a 24 hour period. Oh, oh, so so this it shows be... from 12 midnight to 12. Ah. Okay. <laughs> like 12 to 12, right? Mm -hmm. So early morning hours are shown in green because not mm -hmm. so much uh, energy is being used. So that's the low. That's, yep. that's when your heart mm -hmm. is at rest, right? Yep. Yep. And then it starts waking up. The campus mm -hmm. starts waking mm -hmm. up, and so it gets into the yellow. And then it's red because we're running a marathon now mm -hmm. for until mm -hmm. school is out. And then it starts tapering off, and you mm -hmm. can see it going mm -hmm. from orange to yellow. And then it's going to quiet down again to be rest state. Yeah, so yeah. these are things that we can begin to connect with students. And then there's a, actually the other ones, like the speedometer of how mm -hmm. quickly we rev up. So it's like a race car, mm -hmm. and that one is in real time. And that tool is effective in communicating how quickly we ramp up when mm -hmm. things are turned on and turned off. So how we use it, I think this is still kind of an exploratory. Interesting, But yeah. we're using it to inform our energy management strategies. Mm -hmm. Again, on all the campuses, they have a lot going on. They're already doing a lot, but this just gives you a little yeah. bit more information. So like the speedometer with the little green slice on the left, say that six in the morning, could you actually be watching this as six becomes seven in the morning, becomes eight in the morning, and then it's ramping up more and more and more? You'll see it in yeah. real time. And it sometimes, mm -hmm, just mm -hmm. like a, um, you know, a speedometer, will, it'll flick up really fast and mm -hmm, it'll come mm -hmm. coming down. And it could be for various reasons, like yeah. you know, chillers turning on or other mm -hmm, things. Mm -hmm. But it's a great tool for troubleshooting. Um, but at the same time, it adds to that you know, awareness, leads to yeah, inquiry, yeah, inquiry yeah, leads yeah. to action. Because yeah. now you can make the connection as to what's causing it, mm -hmm. where can we be more effective yeah. and target 
what's going to help you help manage and save. And getting back to the children, I can see them, you know, watching that green thing go up, up, up. Hey, how come it's going up? <laughs> because all the classrooms are turning on their lights and the AC is coming on and the computers are coming on. And that, that's, that's why, a connection yeah. to their place, right? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. here's a connection that says, hey, we live or we go to school mm -hmm. and this is how we're affecting the school. So mm -hmm. this is how the school... You know, how, how do we then inform our own actions? Do we turn off the lights in the classroom? Do we, you know, do we really need yeah. that AC when it's 70, a, a nice beauty. 60 degrees we, We've been out. having all these cool days. Very cool you know. days, yeah, yeah. yeah. So then I'm just envisioning around 10.30 in the morning, they might see the green thing having hit a kind of high. And then that green, if that uh, reflects consumption, kind of starts going down. They say, what's going on here? Well... The sun's beginning to be strong and the photovoltaics are kicking in. Does it show that also? And yes. then there, there's a dip from, say, 1030 to uh, 233. Yep. Say, That's the photovoltaics up there. Right, yeah. and yeah. they can easily pick out based on the trend data. So mm -hmm. then the other things we have now, historical data, that they can go and pick out. We can, you know, as, mm -hmm. as people watching the energy use, we could actually pick out days and get a better sense of the productivity. But at the same time, students could easily pick that out too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We, have to, we have to get there. We just haven't, you know, trying to yeah. get these things installed. And I brought some photos to share. It, it took quite a bit of coordination and teamwork to actually make it happen. I can so imagine. I think we just are trying to build, and these are the, the stepping stones to get there. Absolutely. <laughs> so we've got a very short time, believe it or not. Why don't we zip through? The, the final slides, you can zip us through the explanation here. I think they're not very complicated from now on. Yeah, these are just images of, um, uh, we worked with Hawaii Energy um, and the, install, the installers of this unit, and mm -hmm. they were able to, this is them working on one of our solar, to make the solar visible, we had to install some equipment Absolutely. at our solar. And then the next slide is, oh, that's a fascinating slide. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that slide actually shows the actual box. That's the mm -hmm. box with all the magic, and STEM is the organization that provided the platform. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's a, a national organization. That They're based out of California, mm -hmm. and they've been working um, with Hawaiian Electric over the several, last several years. And um, they actually came out of the what was called Energy Accelerator at that sure, time. Sure, sure. As yeah. part of, so the, the, there's a nice story here that connects, you know, investments several mm -hmm, years ago mm -hmm. as an incubator. We tried it here yep. in Hawaii, mm -hmm. and, and they're now, and um, Hawaii, we now have it in our place, beautiful. right? So making yeah, that connection. A, a dream come, come true, because uh, Hawaii has a very strong STEM or innovators uh, program. Yeah, and, and incubation program for a lot of these new technologies. And mm -hmm. one of the things that's really I love about it is that there's so many um, jobs and opportunities yes. created. So it cre creates that appetite for mm -hmm. kids to want to try something. Yeah. And, and they, these the, the wages are not going to be dishwashing wages. They're 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 apprenticeship yeah. level, electrician mm -hmm. level certified. Yeah. Yeah. So you see here um, just a couple of folks working in that. Space. Mm -hmm. And he looks young enough where the students could identify. Oh, that could be me in a, in a few years. Yeah, yeah they, they were a great great group to work with, mm -hmm. and um, we we're very very fortunate to have a, a good team that was responsive because we had we had multiple deployments and they had mm -hmm. to work within our schedules with our students. You know, like yep. being on campus, so we had to wait for the holidays and the and the weekends mm -hmm. and to go troubleshoot. So everybody, honestly, it was. Amazing how everyone came together to well, really. That was, if I know you, that happen. was largely your coordination and logistics. But before you get real modest, that brings us to the end of our show. We were just getting warmed up. My goodness, this is exciting stuff. I, I wish I were a child at the uh, Kamehameha School right about now. Yeah. So that brings us, unfortunately, to the end. Howard Wig Code Green with Dora Nakafuji Strategy and Innovation person for Kamehameha School. They're just launching this exciting program. See you next time.